part of Dynasty Behind the Scenes, an ABC TV movie that takes a satiric look at the show, with Bart John playing John Forsythe. Esther, we need to talk. I'll call you right back, Joe. What can I do for you, John? Well, perhaps I've read one too many of these, and I'm going a little loopy. But does it say that I'm remarried to Alexis? Yes, and let me explain. Oh, I think you'd better. Just listen, John. Blake suffers from amnesia. Now, in his delusional state, he actually believes that it's 1965. This way, he can live happily with Alexis, while at the same time not be unfaithful to Crystal. Amnesia. I see. Look, maybe this hasn't dawned on you yet, but this ship is sinking. Somewhere along the way, maybe it was with the clothing line, or Moldavia in a maniacal pursuit of toppling Dallas, or the disaster that was the Kobe's. But somewhere, Esther, somewhere, we have lost total respect for our audience. An oh, audience yeah. has been very good to us. No. Look, I know it doesn't have to be Shakespeare, but this, this is complete insanity. Oh, John, listen. Oh. Now, I will do my part as a professional actor and play the character whichever way you decide, but my request is this. Let us go down with a little dignity. Rebecca? Scott? Leo? Mr. Green? We understand that uh, you two are involved in this morning's shooting incident. Yeah, what's happening? There's going to be a full investigation. We're going to speak to the counsellor. We're OK. We just... What were you thinking? You know the procedure when you're in danger. You dump and run. You leave the patient and protect your own life. It wasn't as simple as that. You could have been killed, both of you. And you were the senior officer in the situation. When we arrived, there were only two injured people. The fact remains is that you stayed. Are you OK, son? You're a bit shaken? Yes, sir. But Rebecca, she was... Rebecca set a bad example today. and Don't follow that lead if you want to stay in the service. Now, I want a full report on the incident on my desk by this afternoon, OK? Yep. Oh, and uh, your mother's expecting you home for dinner tonight, in case you've forgotten. I hadn't forgotten. Look, we'll talk later, OK? Leo? You don't want to do this on your own? I need you here if that's okay. Thank you. Hey, Tom. Hey. Marissa. How are you? Right on time, huh? <laughs> well, you, you want to go around back and meet the rest of the family? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Obviously found the place okay? Yeah. It's a great place. Yeah. Good <laughs> view. Absolutely. Joe, uh, Tom, Marissa, this is uh, my wife Josephine, Hi. please Hi. call her Joe, all her friends do. <laughs> and this is Robbie. G'day. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Looks like his old man, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold that against him. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you at last, Tom. I hope you like cinnamon scrolls. They're a bit of a slapdash effort, I'm afraid. Uh, that's great. Tea. Yes, thank you. You've done a great job. Well, it's a beautiful view. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we love it here, don't we, darling? Oi, manners. Mm. Guests first. Sorry. We've got some special guests here today, mate. We've got to look after them. You guys okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, uh... I'm glad you could make it, both of you. I realised last night must have been a bit of a bombshell. It's been a lot for my family to take in as well. Well, it's not every day you get a chance to meet your long-lost brother, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, last night you said that you had two boys? Oh, Darren's uh, spending the day playing with a mate or something. You'll meet him another time. No rush. We got plenty of time, haven't we? Yeah. Supercuts is open late, so you can get a haircut before a hot date, or better still, go there for a hot date. And talk about a super cheap date. Superguts, as hip as you want to be. 
So, if you're involved in something that leads to murder, it's okay as long as you pull out a week before your assassins do their work. Louise, would you like to join our legal team? That was really <laughs> concise. Can you keep a straight face while someone with a thick German accent says that? Do you think Dr. Kissinger will make a credible witness? Dr. Kissinger was Richard Nixon's closest advisor for five years. I think we can trust his integrity. Oh. <laughs> what about Watergate? Look, if they'd assassinated the people Henry recommended, that whole thing would have blown over. <laughs> but oh no, that pussy Nixon kept going on and on about the Constitution and the so Bill of... So Dr. Kissinger will be testifying? Well, if he's not too backed up with his patients. He's not a medical doctor. No, he helps international statesmen remove their conscience. <laughs> the trick is just to pretend you're playing a game of chess. Check. Dying is easy. Comedy is hard. But I seem to be getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you're a dreary bunch. Places, please. Places. Oh, must we? Not even a chuckle, Hugh. You know, people laugh loudest when they're most frightened. By rights, you should be killing yourself. <laughs> now, this is just a paragraph, but I want to run it by you because it's quite pivotal to the book. The story so far. Our hero, Dominic, has encountered a minor devil who calls himself Brad. Brad offers Dominic the usual temptation, sex, wealth, fame, and especially the power of life and death over others. <laughs> By the end of chapter four, Dominic has succumbed. Good Intentions, a novel by Sebastian Toons. Chapter five. Well, there you have it. You see, you don't need a super budget to get a super cut. And just remember, you can be as hip as you want to be. Hey, Ruth.